Hi, today I'm going to talk about the electrical side of the system. So far we've discussed the construction of the base and the parcel assembly of the um, CNC itself and I've also shown you the way that we're going to make it move mechanically and demo that a little bit uh, but now I just want to introduce you to the electrical parts. So we'll go ahead and start with the main stuff here. Um, this is a gecko drive and uh, what this does is control the motors. Uh, this is what relays the code into the motors and tells it how far to move, how fast to move, when to go in reverse, and when not to move at all. So you can kind of think of that as um, you know the intermediary between the computer itself and the software and uh, the motors. This right here is a power supply, not unlike one that you might find in your computer, um, but it's just a bit bigger, more powerful, a lot heavier um, and it doesn't have the cable that you're used to seeing in the back there this is hard hard wired in but uh, this guy here is a 48 volt setup 12.5 amps and uh, you could go with a little bit less if you wanted to but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of power on tap this right here is just a um, wireless receiver figured if I'm going to put a computer out in the shop I want it wireless so I can access the internet when it's not being used on the CNC got myself a wireless keyboard and mouse and both of these are relatively cheap this is a ten dollar item and uh, this is a twenty dollar item so you know even if you were to go and buy the, the stuff that plugs in you're not going to save very much money um, this right here is called a DB9 cable otherwise known as a 9 pin, a VGA uh, RGB, you know, it's, it looks exactly like the cable that you would use to plug in, you know, the old school monitors, um, you know, before DVI took over and HDMI took over. Um, this cable, though, was designed specifically for the CNC stuff. Um, supposedly, it has thicker wiring inside than what's in this, and um, and it's supposed to be more flexible because these cables are going to move constantly as the machine moves. So, it's definitely more flexible than this. Uh, this is much more stiff, even though this is thicker. Um, you know, the the wiring inside here is 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 a um, bigger gauge. Okay, right here. This is just a um, a connection to to create uh, a DB9 setup so that you can plug it into this cable. Because you'll notice on the top of this gecko drive here that uh, this is all the same type of connection. So this is a little bit of an uh, area where you have to do some soldering to uh, connect the, the motor to the cables and stuff. This right here is an e-stop. You guys should all be familiar with that. It's the same, same ones as on the bigger machines that we use. You, know, you push in, stop it, twist it to unlock it. These here are called limit switches. You'll click on and off and um, when, when the part of the mechanical machine that's moving across the axis is come in contact with that, it sends a signal to the computer that tells it to shut it off. So this is used to um, stop the machine from basically running off the rails or, or damaging itself. This right here is the heart of all the motion on the machine. This is called the stepper drive. Um, this is a four wire dual shaft quarter inch shaft. These are 381 ounce motors. I'm going to be having four in use. Two on the x-axis that move the entire gantry and then one for to move it across the, the machine and one to pull it up and down. Okay, This right here is the old school parallel cable. Uh, you guys may remember that if you're into computers 20 years ago. Um, believe it or not that's actually what controls all this stuff to this day. So um, that is the one thing that um, was actually made it the biggest pain of all is because um, in order to get all this stuff to talk to each other, at least the way that I'm doing it, um, it requires the use of a parallel uh, cable. So um, all my computers were too modern um, and you know, I didn't want to really devote anything out here in the dusty shop to that. So I went out and I picked up a computer and uh, this was actually probably one of the cheapest pieces of electronics that I bought. I ended up getting this computer and this LCD monitor, 17 inch LCD monitor for a hundred bucks. And that was from a um, recycling store. Um, they deal with commercial buyouts of you know all older
computers and um, they just had pallets of this stuff. So this is actually not a bad computer at all. Um, it is a Pentium D, so it's a dual core, 3 gigahertz. Um, it comes with a fully licensed XP Pro on it, has 2 gigabytes of RAM, and it has more than enough power to run any of this software. It'll run HD video and all that other stuff as well. So even though it's you know six, seven years old, it's in great shape, works perfect, and um, it's more than adequate for what I'm going to be using it for. So that's pretty much a general overview of all this, and uh, you'll see it all come together. And um, I'll explain it a little bit more once we start having uh, time to put this stuff together and hook it up. And uh, that's it. All right. I just realized I should clarify what you need on the computer itself. This this is the main thing that you want. The, the computer um, has to have that parallel port on there. And uh, you can buy a card and add it onto any computer you want. It is you know if it's a regular desktop, they're like ten bucks. You know they're not expensive at all. But uh, obviously, if that's your main computer inside, you don't want this. Has to be a dedicated system that you're going to leave out here. So uh, it's really not going to work too good in the shop if it's a computer you use inside. So. Uh, make sure you have that and also one more thing is there is more um, stuff needed to get it all hooked up obviously um, power cord and miscellaneous wires to, to, to get everything soldered together and run but uh, that's just the small stuff this is all of the major electrical stuff needed hey I just wanted to recap now with the base now that it's completed and go over what what I uh, left off with and that's just going to be the corner braces as you see here and all I did was uh, glue the insides here press it tight against the frames go ahead and brad nailed it across it I used one inch brad so before using one and a quarter if you use one and a quarter you're going to blow out the side I know because I did it but one inch works fine um, I also took three inch screws pre-drilled into the corner post and then sunk these in you want to put a little bit of tension on it and um, that's why when it's assembled there's a little bit of a space in between here for that reason and uh, that's going to pull everything nice and tight we've also installed the center braces that span across it that holds everything nice and tight as well um, these were not doweled together these are actually nailed in and then screwed two screws on the top I got corner braces on all four corners top and bottom the bottoms a little bit different though the bottoms are not the same width as the tops they're shorter and the reason being is because for those of you who want to uh, lay a sheet good down in here to make a uh, shelving area then um, you don't want you know make it look a little bit nicer it'll lay just beneath the bottom or beneath this top edge here so um, it'll actually hold stuff in place and not let anything roll out on you so that's it for now um, of course the wheels are on there too, locking casters and this thing is very mobile. I was sitting on it, having it be pushed around, I weighed 240 pounds and this thing moved like it was on uh, ice. So uh, once this machine's on top it's not going to have any problems being mobile. Once it's up and running though, um, I might actually go ahead and add a provision to make this thing um, get up off the ground completely and off the wheels um, if I find that it's moving around too much even with it locked down then uh, that's what I'll go ahead and do but for now I'm hoping I'll just have to use the locking wheels to keep it in place um, being that I've never actually operated a CNC before I don't know what's going to happen so either way it's together it's strong it's rigid and we'll have no problem holding that CNC machine